Need some help? <laughs> yeah, but no offense. Oh, right, because I'm Amish, so I wouldn't know anything about your 69 GTO Judge. 455 Big Block, Ram Air, 411 Posse, something like that? Weird, that thing must have fallen straight from space. Well, good luck with the future ride, space man. <laughs> well, that's the type of guy you'd want to run into if you ever had a problem with an old car like the Chevy Nova. Welcome to Flint Dog Woodwork. Today, we're not talking about the Chevy Nova, but we're talking about the Nova Voyager. In this second video of a two-part series, we're gonna take a look at all the features of this amazing tool. So let's get started. Well, hopefully you've had a chance to check out my first video in this two-part series where I assembled this amazing tool. I was really quite impressed with how easy that Voyager was to assemble. And I could really tell when I was assembling this tool how well built this drill press is, which is great because this is going to be one of the most technologically advanced tools as well as precise tools in my shop. In this second video about the Nova Voyager, we're going to dig into a lot of the features and functions of this amazing tool. So let's not waste any more time and go over to the drill press. So the first thing that we're going to do today before we get into the technology of this machine is we're going to take a look at a lot of the physical components of this drill press, which are not unlike many of the drill presses on the market today. On the side of the machine you can see the on and off switch, and it also comes with a safety key so that you can protect your little ones from drilling holes in their heads. This reminds me of the time you tried to drill a hole through your head, remember that? If we look at the other side of the machine you can see there's a physical depth stop, and this has got a quick release button so that you can easily change your depth and this goes from zero inches all the way up to about six and a half inches. And the ability to go all the way up to six and a half inches really gives you a lot of flexibility when you're going to make your drill holes. If we look at the back side of the drill press, you can see there's a nice little gauge here that allows you to change the angle of your table. This can go anywhere from zero degrees all the way up to 45 degrees. Another nice feature of this drill press is it comes with a secondary table right at the foot of the drill press. This has got two miter slots and is cast iron as well. The nice thing about this is if you're drilling into something that's extremely large, you can remove the top table and still use the bottom table as your reference. So now that we've talked about a couple of the physical features that this drill press has, I now want to talk about a couple that it doesn't. So one of the first physical components that I noticed was missing from this tool is onboard lighting. But that's okay because I usually add a magnetic sewing light to all my drill presses. This is with no light and then light. The second thing that I noticed is there's no laser guidance. There's no crosshairs to give you an idea of where your bit's going to hit your material. This is okay, however, because there's some features with the technical aspects of this drill that may take care of that. Another feature that this drill press is missing is accessibility at the top, and that's because this thing does not have step pulleys to adjust the speed of the drill bit. And that, my friends, was one of the main selling points of this drill press. You no longer have to get under the hood to change the pulleys just to get that speed you want. What you got under the hood? And my response, I got balls under the hood, literally. And let's face it, if you're like me, you never change those pulleys. You would just hope that the speed you had set up would just work for whatever you were drilling into. The last physical component that I want to talk about is the size of the table. This thing comes in at over 16 and a half inches wide by 16 and a half inches deep. Well, that's enough about the physical features of this tool. Now let's get into some of the technical features of this drill press, which is the real reason why I purchased this item. So first off, let's take a look at the screen after you turn it on. If you look at the upper left hand corner, you can see the speed that the drill is currently set to. At the bottom, you have fully customizable speeds that you can place into each one of these boxes. These correspond to the buttons below, which are F1, F2, F3, and F4. Not only can you press F1, but if you press it again, you have a second level of speed you can set the drill press to. How the hell do you program these push buttons? If we look below the F buttons, you can see there's the on and the off switch. There's also a zero confirm button as well as a menu cancel button. You'll also notice that there's a little knob where you can manually adjust the speed of the press. So now that you have an idea of what the screen looks like, let's go into the menu and see some of the more advanced features of this tool. So if we press the menu button, you can see there's eight different options. You'll see there's a speed chart, a user set depth, a self start off and on, advanced modes, edit F shortcuts, edit favorite speeds, direction forward or backwards, and lastly, configuration. So let's take a look at that first menu, which is speed charts. Let's see what that's all about. 
So if we select the speed chart, you can see this is where we tell the drill press what type of bit we're using. This allows you to select a twist bit, a brad point bit, a bullet pilot point, a Forstner bit, a glass tile bit, a hole saw bit, a spade bit, a spade bit with spurs, countersink bits, shear cut countersink, power bore bits, and lastly circle cutters. So once you select what type of bit you're going to be using, the drill press is now going to ask you what size of bit you're going to be using. That's because the press will automatically adjust the speed of rotation to accommodate that bit. So let's say we have an inch and a half Forstner bit. What we're going to do is go over to the Forstner bit and select it. Then we're going to move down till we find the inch and a half setting, which is in between one and three eighths and two inches. Now we'll tell the machine whether we're going into softwood or hardwood. In this case, we'll go to hardwood. With the type of wood we're using, which is hardwood and the Forstner bit at one and a half inches, this thing is going to rotate at 250 RPMs. And did you notice that I didn't have to reference any sort of chart or adjust any sort of pulley? That's amazing. Now we already mentioned that this tool has a physical depth stop, but this tool also has a digital depth stop. That's what we're going to take a look at next. So let's say we have a piece of wood that we want to drill into three quarters of an inch deep. So we go into user set depth, and then we simply rotate the knob until we get to three quarters of an inch. Then we hit zero to save. So you may be asking, is this drill press now only going to go down three quarters of an inch from its zero setting? Well, we need it to reference the top of our material. So we need to put our material underneath that drill press and zero it out at the top of that material. So to do this, I'll actually lower the drill bit until it hits the very top of our material. Then I can hit the zero button. So now that we have the drill press zeroed out at the top of this material, I now can turn on the drill press and we can make that three quarters of an inch cut. And you probably saw from that, the drill press actually stops once it gets to that three quarters of an inch. Now I'm pretty sure that my camera didn't pick it out, but once we start that drilling process, it automatically adjusts the load of the drill press. There's also an audible beep that allows you to know how close you are to that end point. As you get closer to the three quarters of an inch, it begins to beep quicker and quicker. So now I've got a one and a quarter inch Forstner bit and I want to go a quarter of an inch deep into this material. So we're going to walk through all the steps that I do to make this adjustment. So first off, I'll go to speed chart and I'll select my bit, which is a Forstner bit. Since we're at one and a quarter, I'll select one and one eighth all the way up to one and a quarter. And we're going to be going into softwood. And I'll hit zero to confirm. Now that we have the drill bit selected, we need to change the depth to a quarter of an inch. So we'll go into user set depth and we'll change the three quarters of an inch to one quarter. Then we'll hit zero to confirm. Now it's time to lower the bit until it hits the very top of our material. Then we can zero it out by pressing zero. Once we've completed all that, it's simply a matter of turning the press on and making the cut. And just like that, we have a perfectly cut out quarter of an inch deep Forstner bit cut. So you can see where this would come in really handy. You can get the exact depth you want with really no effort at all. Now let's take a look at the third menu item, which is the self start option. So if we select the self start off, you can see you can turn it off and on. And there's really nothing other than that. Let me show you what this does. So with the self start on, you can see as I lower the drill press, the drill press will begin spinning once I reach a certain depth. This is really an amazing feature that allows you to run this drill press with one hand. You can make consecutive cuts without having to turn the machine off and on. So for this example, with a self start on, I'm going to make three more of those quarter inch deep Forstner bit cuts. I'm going to leave one hand over here and I'm simply going to raise and lower the drill press.
And hopefully you saw that I was able to make three more of those cuts with having both of my hands in frame without turning the machine off and on. And you probably saw the drill bit stopping every time I raised that quill. And being able to focus on your hands and your workpiece as you're raising the bit up and down really is a nice feature, not to mention a great time saver. Now let's take a look at the fourth menu item, which is advanced modes. Now I'll be honest, I haven't tested out each one of these modes, but I wanna show you what each one does. So if we select advanced modes, you can see that there's four different selections. The first selection is pilot hole. And if we select this, we actually can change the start speed so that it's a little bit slower so that we can create those perfect pilot holes. If we go to tapping mode, this allows you to do tapping with this drill press. Now this is something that I haven't done, so I can't really explain this feature in its entirety. If we go to the third mode, it's power spindle hold. And if we select that, it says power spindle hold. For keyless chucks, press on to apply force for 30 seconds to allow tightening of the drill bit. The last one is anti tear out. And just like with the pilot hole mode, which allowed you to slow down the speed at the beginning, this will actually allow you to increase the speed at the very end to prevent tear out. Now with those advanced modes, I'll be honest, I haven't played around with them too much. After I have a little bit more experience with this tool, I'll share my thoughts on those modes. Now the next two menu items allow you to adjust and customize those F keys. You can adjust the speed of rotation for each one of those F keys, F1 through F8. So if we click on edit F shortcuts, this allows you to really dial in what you want for each one of those F keys. You can change the speed of each one of these as well as change the units or set depth for each one of these F keys. Not only can you set the depth and the speed for each one of those F keys if you have a setting that you use over and over, but you can also set one of these F keys to go in reverse if you have a need for that. The next menu setting is edit favorite speeds. And this simply allows you to change the speed of each one of those F keys. So you can really customize and personalize this machine with those F keys to give you the desired settings that you need. Now let's take a look at the next menu item, which is the forward and reverse option. So there's not a whole lot to show here other than you can change the direction at which the quill is rotating. You can go from forward to reverse and back again to forward. And this is a feature that I've never seen on any other drill press the ability to change the rotation to reverse. This can come in handy if you get your drill bit stuck in a piece of wood and you just need to get it out. Now the last menu item on this machine is the configuration tab. This allows you to do things like put passwords on the machines, do a version update, or do a factory reset. So I'm not gonna dig into the details of that menu tab as it really doesn't affect the functionality of this machine. Well, I hope you enjoyed checking out some of the features of this Nova Voyager. This truly is an amazing machine and this will be a lifelong tool for me. So if you're in the market for a drill press, I think this tool has got to be on your short list. There really is no other drill press with all the features that this tool has. Well, thanks again for joining me today, folks. I'll leave links to this tool in the description below so you can go check it out for yourself. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.